Yeah, so my name's Mark, and uh, about a year ago, a little more than a year, last, let's start off last summer. So last summer, me and my wife, we were living in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We had been there for about nine years, and uh, I was a police officer. My wife was a uh, addiction therapist, mostly for youth, but a family therapist, too, uh, for families. And uh, we had decided that we were going to move to Sisters. My in-laws are here tonight. And last summer we thought, okay, you know, we had been enough times to Oregon, and my mom's living in Bend, and we had been enough times to where I thought, okay, you know, we were we were driving back home after a visit, and we thought, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do it. Let's move. Let's move to Sisters. And we thought, well, how are we gonna make that happen? And so we we started talking about different ideas. Maybe even we were both kind of up to changing careers, and we really wanted to be part of this community. We wanted to live here and be close to grandmas and grandpas and, and everything else, but. Uh, and had everything that we really wanted out of life. And, uh, but we thought, we really realistically thought, okay, it's probably going to be a couple years then if we, before we can make the move. We're going to look for jobs, and we're going to try to stay in our own careers. And with the law enforcement agencies here, they don't test every year, so sometimes, even if you can test, that can be hard. Sometimes it's competitive to get into, and it's a, sometimes it's a year-long process just to get hired. So looking at for my career point, I thought, well, it's probably going to take a lot longer, so I thought she'd get a job. A lot easier, and I would maybe just be a stay home dad and try to do something else. But um, so last Thanksgiving, uh, just before Thanksgiving, uh, November 15th, I was on a snowmobile uh, at a friend's house, and uh, we had planned to go out and cut down a Christmas tree and do all that stuff. And um, we were working on some snow machines there, and uh, and I we took them out just down the road, and I was being pretty reckless, and I crashed, and uh, I broke my neck in three places. Um, it was about one in the afternoon when it happened, and uh, I I was on an icy road, and I was making a, trying to make a 90 degree turn. I was going really, I was going way too fast, and I, I flipped and rolled it, and I crashed, and I uh, I broke C2 all the way through in the front. I exploded my C6 vertebrae. I dislocated my C7, and my spinal cord was 25 percent deviated. And then it had swelling. Swelling is the real big thing with spinal cord injuries. It's a slight swelling from C1 to T1. And I lost, yeah, I couldn't move at all. Couldn't, couldn't move anything. Um, when my buddy first got to me, I could tell, he, I, I probably laid there for about a minute before he, he got to me. And he, uh, you know, he was like, oh, what'd you do, man? Because he didn't actually see the crash. He, was, he saw me going kind of fast. I went back past him pretty quick. And, uh, and I was like, don't touch me. I got broken vertebrae. Because I, I couldn't move. I knew that something was broken. So. Um, you know, he, he actually is the, at the church, I was going to a Presbyterian church there, and he was the youth and family director there, so he's kind of like my pastor, and so uh, he starts praying over me, and, uh, you know, I, I thought I was going to die, and, uh, uh, you know, luckily the ambulance got to me about an hour after the collision, and then I got into surgery uh, probably about three hours after the collision, and uh, going into surgery, my surgeon he, um, he said that I'd be very lucky if someday I could operate an electric wheelchair with one of my hands. So that, that would be like the best possible outcome. Um, and so the first, you know, the first thing that went through my mind was, um, you know, I'm not going to feel my man. I'm not going to be able to hold my babies. I got a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I thought, I'll never feel them again. The surgeon was like, I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen, it's over, you know, and, uh, and he had, I was lucky, I was, it was a blessing, it was a miracle just that he was there, he, he's probably one of the top 10 trained spinal cord surgeons in the country, so just the fact that he was on, on duty there and able to do the surgery is pretty amazing, um, he trained at all the, you know, the, the, the best schools you could possibly go to. 18 years of college just to be able to do my surgery, he said. But, uh, so anyway, I, I go into surgery, and um, they actually had to put a pin in my hand and, and move my hand, you know, to, to sign the documents and whatever, uh, to be able to, to, to have surgery. Uh, I go in, and when I'm coming out, they're reeling me out, and, uh, you know, I'm coming, coming back to consciousness, and uh, my surgeon says, he uses a couple of four-letter words, <laughs> But he says, you're a miracle. It's a miracle. And I'm like, 
like, what? And he's like, I see you're moving your legs. You're moving your legs, Mark. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, I'm so kind of loopy. And um, I could move one of my legs. And, and when I right came out, right when I was starting to come out, I, I could move, I was moving my legs. And uh, that was, it, you know, didn't make sense. I, I shouldn't have been able to do that. Um, so over the next two days, I was able to wiggle my left toe. That's all I could do was just boop, boop, boop. Just, just wiggle my left toe, nothing else. I couldn't move anything else. Um, and, uh, you know, I, my faith, um, it, uh, I can't remember a time in life where I wasn't a Christian, where I didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. I grew up in a, in a, uh, you know, a church-going household. My mom's an ordained minister. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, I, my, my faith with Jesus uh, was something a little bit different than it is now. But, um, and as I prayed, um, I kind of realized that it wasn't like a lightning bolt that did this to me. It wasn't like, a, it wasn't like something that, uh, out of my control. It was like I was kind of being pretty reckless on a snow machine when I crashed it. And so I didn't really have anybody to blame uh, except for myself. Um, and I just kind of owned it. And I kind of, I kind of, there, there was a moment. Um, there was a moment when, uh, when I kind of just surrendered my, my suffering to Jesus, and um, and I think in that moment, um, it's kind of what uh, what Ryan was talking about uh, in Philippians, and there's a there's a small part there where, where uh, Paul's talking about um, suffering with Jesus. He understands your suffering. He's suffering with you, and I think there's a part of of that our relationship with Christ that you know he. Uh, really wants to heal the suffering and bear the suffering with us. And, um, and in that moment when I was able to just kind of like accept my suffering uh, and allow Christ to join me in my suffering, it's really profound. It really, really profound things happen. I can really feel the Holy Spirit like I never had before. But uh, what's, what's amazing is that uh, um, about a week later, uh, I could move my right leg. I started to be able to, actually just a couple days later, I could, I couldn't move my foot at will, but I could try to move it. I just stared at it, try to move it. And about every 10th time I would, I could make it move, you know? And, uh, and so nobody really knew. I was kind of like this bizarre, bizarre case study. It's like, it's like, well, am I going to, where am I going to end up? What's going to happen? And they didn't really know. And they said, well, you know, people make recoveries. We don't know. And, and, uh, you know, I had so many people praying for me, man. It was just crazy. The prayer chain went out, and it was like, just like all across the country, all my friends, and diff all their churches that are spread out across the country, all their friends' churches. You know, I had, I had all my Catholic friends praying for me, all my Presbyterian <laughs> friends. I had uh, my buddy, I went up to the Crow Reservation in Montana, and he told their, like, medicine man guy, and I don't know what he did. But, uh, but yeah, so it was really profound. I think, you know, I can't tell you how many people, uh, once I did, I started walking again. Uh, I, nine weeks later, I walked out of the hospital, out of the rehab hospital in Denver, uh, on my own power. Yeah. Um, you know, and nobody thought that would happen. I mean, no one thought that would happen. And, uh, you know, even my physical therapist that was at Denver, um, when I was working with her, she had been there for, for 30 years. And, uh, and I would say, you know, Mary, is, have you ever seen anybody make this kind of recovery? And she'd say, no. She's like, not in 30 years. Not like that. Not going from where you were to where you're now. It's such a huge gap of recovery in such a small amount of time that it's miraculous that they can't really medically <clears throat> explain it. So when I think about miracles, you know, I think about, I share, I share my testimony. And I, I, sometimes I, you know, I used to tell people, yeah, I got paralyzed, man. And now I'm walking around. Jesus made me walk again. Figure that out, you know. And some people, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. I don't know. I think everybody interprets miracles in their own way. And I think, um, you know, I think maybe sometimes we try to rationalize it. You know, I definitely, in my mind, I have. I, I definitely have, have gone through the, the the steps of thinking like, well, maybe I'm just like a medical anomaly, and maybe it's not really the power of Christ, you know, and and, uh, and His miracle. And uh, but you know, you have enough people telling you that's what it is. It's hard to deny. It's hard to deny the, the reality of, uh, of my recovery. Um, but um, when I think about miracles, when I 
when I was uh, when I couldn't move, and I didn't know I didn't know where I was gonna end up, or where my new career would be, or where my family would be, or if my wife would still be with me, or or you know, because the hardships I would put on her. Um, and I just there are so many unknowns um, about where I would end up, but knowing that I could still be a, a good father and a good son and a good friend. And, and a good husband, you know, knowing I could still do those things, regardless of where I was physically, um, you know, is, is extremely powerful, you know, in understanding that that's probably the more real thing, that that's probably vastly more real than, like, our physical experience here on this earth, whether you're, how you're feeling physically or whatever, your, your physical impact here in the world, I think the vastly more real thing is probably the spiritual aspect of our, of our relationships, the love we can give, the love that we can be because of Jesus, you know, being Christ's love here on earth is vastly more real, I think, and, and longer lasting than our physical, physical being. But, um, but uh, you know, one of the things that, um, that me and Brie, Brie really uh, struggled with was, uh, was kind of like, you know, where does our relationship go from? Because it's, in the last year, it's just been like, it's been so intense on a marriage, you know, I mean, just think about the intense stuff that comes along with injury, and, uh, you know, I mean, I think we all go through injuries, we all have, even, you know, she's at home sick right now, she really wanted to be here today, and she couldn't, because she's got the flu, so, she, she's sick, she had, she, she started writing this blog, um, when, when my injury happened, uh, just to kind of get out, uh, my status and stuff, and so, it's kind of interesting, you know, I always told her, I think you should be a writer, I want you to go write. And, and so this injury kind of spurred her on to be able to just keep people informed, you know, so they were they could re- go onto her blog and they could read, like, where I'm at and stuff like that. And uh, so she's kept doing that, but uh, she gave me, I printed out a little excerpt to read it again, so you guys can kind of hear her words. But, um, but you know, the challenges, the challenges of life, you know, I mean, I think our, maybe my example is kind of extreme, but... But I think, what does God want to do in your life? What miracle are you needing? And I think when you look at a guy who was in a wheelchair and now he's not, and, you know, that's miraculous and amazing. Yeah. But I think with maybe even the miracle that God needs to perform in your life, what is it? Because it's probably not physical. It's probably spiritual. It's probably emotional. You know? The real miracle of Jesus is is that he can heal you miraculously, emotionally and spiritually, you know, and he wants to do that in your life. Um, I think we all have some of those injuries in our lives, you know, probably the older we get, the more we probably pick up, <laughs> you know, and you may think, sit here and think, I can't, I'll never, ever be able to forgive that person. I just can't. I can't do it. It'll never happen. You may think that, wow, I was so hurt by that person, I'm never going to let that go. I can't let go of that pain. I just, I don't know how. I don't know how to let go. But it's never going to happen. It's impossible to let that go. Those are the injuries. Those are the hurts that he wants to heal miraculously. Those are the things where you think, this is, I, there's no way I can get over that. Yeah, forgiveness and all that stuff. Grace, all that stuff. Great, that's awesome. Good, yeah, yeah, we should forgive people. When it comes down to those really, really heavy things, you know, well, that's impossible. I can't do that. I just can't. I can't do it. That's the miracle God wants to perform. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. Okay? It doesn't have to be next week. It can be tonight. So let it happen. Let your faith be a journey. You know, uh, I think when you get knocked off your feet and something really bad happens in your life, when you grieve somebody, you lose. Uh, and, uh, when you have stuff you just can't get past, you need that miracle, let it be a journey. You know, Because for me, through my suffering, uh, you, get, you get some strength if you can surrender to that, you know, with Jesus, 
just like he surrendered to his suffering. You know, so if you join him with that, okay, you surrender your suffering. There's some strength that can come along with that. You get a certain strength by surrender, surrendering your life, you know, surrendering those things you're worried about. You can surrender that stuff to Jesus, and all of a sudden, you know what? You know, you get stronger from that. You know, and it's a journey. And let that let that, let that be a journey. So as you, as you're processing those those intense things in your life, that just be my encouragement is that is that you let your faith be a journey and understand that. You know, I think I think Ryan said it on Sunday that you know the, it's impossible to know the full the full ramifications of who Jesus was, what he really meant. You can't really completely know Jesus and then let that be a journey that you're discovering that in your own life. You know, let those hard things in your life that maybe he wants to change inside you, and you think there's no way I can be that person. There's no way I can change. Well, that's the miracle that he wants to perform in your life, and that's probably going to be vastly more important than walking around. To be able to stand up and, and to walk, because that's really, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's not the end all be all. You know, we can get around. Look at this man right here. You know? um, <clears throat> I think about John chapter five, uh, and, and uh, in John chapter five, the New Testament, Jesus he went and met a guy. <laughs> That was paralyzed, and by this guy was at uh, he was at a healing waters. And so this 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 gentleman had been there for a long time, and he wanted to get these waters to be healed. Jesus shows up, and he, he says, "What are you doing there?" And he guy says, "I want to get this water so I can be healed." And Jesus says, "Well, stand up." And in the, in the verses that I read, the verses that I read, it's an exclamation mark. So Jesus says, "He's going to say, hey, you know what? Let's just talk." That's not what he says. He goes, stand up! You know, I probably looked, you know, and he's like, hey, what? what's going on over there? Um, so that, I think that's what he's telling us tonight. You know, that's what he's telling us about those 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 wounds that you're walking around with. Um, parts of us that maybe we don't like when we get tired and angry or agitated um, and we act emotionally and stuff. Those parts of us that he wants to make more Christ-like. Um, when you think, I can't forgive that person, or I can't heal those things, Jesus says, stand up. Now you can heal that. Stand up. You're going to do it. You're okay. Stand up. And, um, you know, I, I, I resonate with that. You know, my journey's been a hard one. Uh, just because my nerves <laughs> have come back, when they do come back, it's really painful. It's like really, really painful. And that's been a really painful journey. I've had a, most of my right side of my body has been atrophied. So even like just standing up right now, like my, my legs like tired from just standing up right now. So it's really weird. Like if I go walking around, it feels like I've done like a thousand lunges on this this, this leg. <laughs> you know, so it's pretty weird um, recovery, but it's a, it's a journey, you know, it's a journey. So um, for me in, in my recovery, I, I kind of like that. You know, I used to do ultra marathons and stuff like that and <laughs> do all kinds of ridiculous mountaineering stuff, dangerous stuff. I like pushing my body. And so to be able to still do that just in a different way is, is, a, is a profound thing. Um, but uh, I think one more thing I'd like to, to say, I, I'm going to read my wife's um, little uh, blog entry right here. But um, one thing I think of too uh, that's really like illuminated parts of my own journey recently is uh, really identifying who I was prior to my accident because I, I was just like this football guy that was a police officer and I was on the mountain patrol and I was on the SWAT team and a pretty physical guy and, and pretty proud physically. I mean, I could pretty much do with ease anything I wanted to do physically. And um, I really took that for granted. And, uh, you know, I kind of... I kind of had a certain identity with all that, you know, that, that Mark was this kind of big football guy, and, you know, I was a guy that kicked the doors down if I needed to be kicked down. I was like, for, I was a middle linebacker and stuff like that, so you can just imagine the kind of my personality. But, uh, so when I got hurt, you know, it was like, my, it was funny, my mom, you know, she, <laughs> well, my mother, you know, think about that, her mother visiting her son in the hospital, and uh, she came to visit me. And uh, just recently, I was like, what were you thinking when you came to see me? And I could, was in the hospital, I couldn't move. And she said, you know, it was weird because 
we all believe this myth that Mark could never get hurt. <laughs> you know, because I had done a lot. I mean, my nine lives were up. Let me tell you, I had burned them all up. You know, so uh, I had done a lot of risky stuff, and um, so that feeling when I was laying there thinking I'm dying, it was like, wow, this isn't a foreign feeling. Like I had felt that at different times in my life. So, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, to talk to her and say, well, what did you think? She said, well, that myth of Mark being, you know, we never thought you would get hurt, and then all of a sudden you're hurt, and whatever. It was kind of like, you know, I had that whole myth in my head, too. You know, I had that whole myth in my head, too. So being injured like that, and then kind of having to cope with that whole rehabilitation part, uh, and being okay with where I'm at now, and struggling with that stuff now, but really, really, you know, picking up your kids and giving them a kiss, you know, hugging my wife, and really meaning it, you know, uh, living your life with your mortality, you know, in, in, your, in your head is okay, it's okay to do that, it's kind of like anti-American culture, but I mean, to wake up in the morning and realize, I could die today, you know, I mean, and I, and there's a healthy way, I think, to think about that, there's a healthy, there's a healthy spectrum in there, to where you can say, like, you know what, I'm going to make the most out of today. Not that I'm going to go try to make all this money or do all this specific thing, but but I'm going to try to be the best husband I can be, be the dad I can be, be the friend I can be. You know, maybe I can be Jesus today. Jesus says love to somebody today. Maybe I can do that. You know, that's a high calling. It's it's a challenge, but it's a it's a journey. It's a journey. I think we're all in different places in that journey, and and that's okay. It's supposed to be that way. Anyway, let me read this. Okay, so this is a small excerpt uh, from my wife's blog, and um, she writes at uh, strengthbysurrender.wordpress.com, and um, she's a talented writer, so I'm really proud of her. But uh, so here we go. Um, so we've rebuilt from the ground floor up our marriage, Mark's body, my heart, our children, our family. We have learned how to have boundaries, how to love deeply, how to trust and surrender our lives to God completely, and not give up hope when the room goes dark. A year of resurrection, we've been raised to life in Christ. To live as Christ means to see death, suffering and pain as gain. Greatest lessons have come by pressing into pain and suffering. And when I do that, in spiritual practice, growth and maturity follow. When I join in Christ's suffering and allow it to mature me, I then can also join in His resurrection and glory. I have come to know God's will, grace, mercy, plan, and purposes in a way that draws me both, both in to self as God's child and out of self into the world. It's been a year of needing God to heal, but in a way that wasn't about taking our pain away, but transforming it into something with purpose. Life has been very uncomfortable, raw, vulnerable, exposed, and harsh. True transformation is really hard in the human experience. I see no human examples of neat, clean, life-changing experiences. We don't grow mature in we don't grow mature and wise by sitting in the peace and tranquility of a bubble bath and candlelight. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> Instead, it is finding good and purpose and being at peace while living out tragedy and hardships. I have become keenly aware of how much we all avoid. Uh, I've become keen, keenly aware of how much we all attempt to avoid suffering, especially of us for first world types. We want to avoid pain at all costs. We attempt to squelch every negative feeling and curse those experiences or people who make us uncomfortable. But oh wait. What if we are missing the whole point of the human experience? What if human existence is meant for each of us to grow? And if our human spirit only grows through overcoming and living out our struggles, then if we avoid pain, we gain nothing. We stay weak and feeble in cycles of needing life to be peaceful and painless so we can be okay. I urge you to not shrink back from pain, but rather press in and find that God is so much bigger and better than you have ever thought possible. So if you like that, um, 
check out her blog, strengthbysurrender.wordpress.com. She, uh, I always thought she was a gifted writer. It's kind of funny, you know, like going through this journey, wanting to move here as, you know, able-bodied, healthy people. <laughs> um, you know, wanting to move here, uh, really, we're here sooner than we could have been. We're here probably physically different, but probably healthier around, you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Um, for her to, to have a career as a writer, she just got hired as a counselor, uh, a part-time counselor with the, um, the uh, hospital. Um, St. Charles. St. Charles, yeah. So she's going to work with them. Um, I'm, I'm at Fuller Seminary right now studying theology, and uh, I don't know if I'll ever want to be a pastor someday, but uh, <laughs> it's, kinda, it's a calling, so I don't, I don't know about that yet, but, um, but uh, I, do, I do think I'd like to be involved in ministry. I want that to be part of, of my life, uh, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm studying some real estate stuff too, so I'd like to maybe start some kind of company, but I, I'd like to really, the more I talk about my future visions of Ministry, vocation, and advocation. I'd like to, I'd like to have a really healthy balance of both of them, and I really like, I'd like to be able to to find that uh, find that healthy balance. And I think it's a challenge for all of us. But uh, thanks for listening, to you guys. And you know, know that I like telling my story. And if you if you have stuff that you could that you think of or you thought, oh, you know, you know, I've been through something similar. Or I I've been through other things. There's some other people in this room that I know that had some serious similar. Nerve neurological injuries, um, but I mean, I think all of us have a special testimony to give, and you know, all of us have some kind of story to tell. And I think when I do tell my story to people, and I say, yeah, you know, nine weeks later I walked out of the hospital, you know, and, and I don't always get into, you know, Jesus helped healed me, and I don't say that exactly, but I do say that uh, your faith is a journey, and uh, understanding and knowing your God is a journey, and uh, let it be that whatever you're going through. And when I say it to people, it seems like the vast majority of people that I've told that to say, I'm going through something similar. <laughs> you know, because we are. We are all going through something similar. Absolutely. Absolutely we are. So, you know, let's let's share our stories. Let's encourage each other. And let's, let's be Christ-loving each other. Thanks, you guys.